Today, I've got something special for you. We are going to tour the Prusa headquarters in Prague. We're going to see how the Mark III, Mark II.5, etc. are made. We're also going to tour the Prusa Mint filament production line and their sneak peeks of the SL1 in there, uh, which is their newly announced resin 3D printer. I always find factory tours like this super interesting because it's the only chance you really get of seeing behind the scenes of what might usually just be a website or, you know, a marketing video or whatever. And this is kind of the the raw unfiltered version of that. So a word of warning here, this tour was filmed right after the Maker Faire Prague, uh, which Prusa organized, sponsored, etc. So we have a 3D Maker noob in there as well, as well as uh, Matt Stoltz. We got to tour the entire building together, but we were all pretty exhausted from Maker Faire just the days before that. And if Prusa just sounds exhausted and tired on this tour, well, he was, but still, thank you for taking the time and energy to uh, to tour the entire headquarters here. And the Prusa headquarters isn't built for them. It's an old factory that they bought and are now renovating and making uh, do for their purposes. And what they figured they could do is just have the bottom floor, the ground floor, as a makerspace. And, you know, makerspace is supposed to be public, so they're doing that. And that is where this tour is starting. Yeah, and it's funny. People really don't realize how big of an operation right. we have. Okay, so, 270, 280, something between there. So we, we, found out that, we found out that we have a, a crane in our warehouse. Wow. Yes, and that's uh, when we realized that we can actually make the lab here. Yeah. So here are the printers, the router, the form two. Very nice. Uh, the, the, over there are the uh, Haas CNC machines, but we still are missing some, some of the equipment because we have vacuum forming. But here there will be a paint job eventually. And we have uh, like the vacuum chamber if you want to do silicon casting, polyurethane casting, and stuff like that. We are also, uh, we are also waiting for, uh, for another laser. This one is... Uh, Chinese with uh, European electronics, but we want to have some smaller one, fancier one if you want to do like precise engraving. This is the SLA, SLA company we bought. We are doing little redesign, so it's easier to manufacture. It's a nice little LCD printer. And I think that's pretty much it here. Oh yeah, this is the vacuum forming. So you have the sheet of, uh, sheet of plastic, it heats up. And this is all open to the public, right? Yes, uh, right now from Wednesday to Friday. Uh, eventually, uh, after the summer, when we learn how to do everything, uh, it will be open. It will be open all during the week. And after some time, you know, if we have some good members, they will gain 24 seven access. Okay, so next we move from the public makerspace area into the actual Prusa factory. So this is the stuff you're not just gonna be able to walk in and see. Ciao, ciao. This is the ground floor. It's, uh, it's being renovated a bit because uh, like two weeks ago, we had our offices here, but we moved up. So these are all prepared printers. They go around the factory in these, so they take less space. You can see that everything here is prepared. Uh, the electronics and everything, and you, uh, there should somewhere be the, the test protocols. And they just, they just take it here. This is, uh, this is our warehouse. Unfortunately, it's, it's too small, so we are trying to rent a building next doors, which was actually the, the first uh, electric power plant in Prague. So, but they have no use for it, so we will make uh, 1,000 pallet spots there. And here. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. So here is our packing line. They pack everything into the into the boxes here, and at the end, you know, you have a finished finished printer. Wait a second. That's that's not what it says on the box. <laughs> and so the, it will get expanded because it's rather uh, it's rather small. That's what we are doing that's, next next door. Oh yeah, this is pretty cool. Ciao. So we have a lot of custom custom jigs and machines. 
So, so this one is uh, to check the length and the angle of the extrusions. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's drilling it. And here we check the frames. If they are, if they are uh, flat enough. Yeah, I think somewhere around, somewhere here, they are making the, the Mark IIs. But the main production floor is upstairs. So, let's go to the next floor is filament. So, you can shoot everything, just, uh, just, uh, just move, just move the... So this is the extrusion line. I don't know if you saw it. And if you've ever seen a filament extrusion line before, this will all look very similar. And if you want the full rundown of how filament is generally made, you can check out my video with Pearl Pasta, where we design and manufacture filament from scratch. So starting on the left here, we've got the spooler, which winds the filament onto spools, as the name implies. We've got a buffer, more on that in a second. Then next up, I believe we have the filament puller, which pulls the filament through the entire machine. Next to it, we have that black box, which is the laser micrometer. And right next to that, we have that teeny tiny unit, and that's the color checker. Then two cooling tanks, two water tanks. That nice color. And then finally, at the end of the line, or start of the line, depending on which way you look at it, we have the extruder itself. Uh, it, it's, it's a bit tweaked out. Right now we are doing 80, 80, 81 millimeters. Uh, 81 meters a minute. Uh, that's for our farm, and we are able to uh, to have uh, plus minus 20 microns. And of course, that is continuously being monitored. On that screen back there, you see that big red box that is indicating that this filament they're now producing, because they're pushing this production line so hard, wouldn't be up to the spec they're setting for themselves for the pushment filament they're actually selling. The filament that's coming off this line right now is going to be immediately used up for the production of new Mark III and Mark 2.5 and MMU printed parts. Now, what I think is pretty cool about this, and I don't think any other manufacturer is doing this for every single spool, is that all this data they're measuring right now about diameters and such is being stored by Prusa, and you get a QR code on every single Prusaman spool that you can then look at uh, what the diameters were during production, and you get exactly that data. I think that's pretty neat. When they cut this, it expands and uh, it's, it's now getting the extra filament in, so it's uh, coming shorter. Ciao. Just around the corner, there were two more filament production lines already running at full capacity. And by now, I think they're up to five or more. This is molecular sieve, which uh, dries out the air and continuously uh, is drying the resin. And it automatically loads a new one from the uh, from the octavins and feeds it into the extruders. This one is actually pretty pretty cool because either uh, it either uses AC during the summer, or if uh, there's uh, it's cold outside, it just uh, running it through the exchanger, so we don't waste energy. Here we have small farm where they test the colors and stuff. Back here we have some cool stuff too. So. So we have the we have the tools here. That's oh, I don't know the English name. Uh, tensile strength. Yes. Tool tester, yeah. Here's impact resistance. That that is actually a pretty old one, but it, it does the job. We got yeah. it for free if we if, if we repair it, and it just had uh, two bad buttons. <laughs> Terko? Ciao, ciao. Okay. Yeah, so. So this is our test station. So uh, we test all the we test all the electronic parts, and this is the place where we actually where it actually prints the the protocols. So that's uh, that's how it's done. That's that mesh. Prusa machines, mm -hmm. almost printer the scuts, the belt. Yes, exactly. Automatic way. This is the belt cutter. And yes, those are actual yes. printer parts they're using for their own machines. And we, we mostly do the, the charge checking and in preparations. We assemble the nozzles here. We have uh, planning. 
for manufacturing, so so you can do you can do that. Here we have the the power supply tester. So we, we check all the power supplies here. Here we make the heated baths. We again check every every single one of them if they are flat. If they're up to speed. Yeah, I do. We do. We do. Okay. Behind you, there is uh, so so this is kitting. So we we uh, do the we do the small uh, ziplock bags with all the parts, and actually, you know, you you can see that the the boxes with the boxes with the parts are getting filled here. Yeah. Ciao. So this is uh, this is another of our testers. This is for testing the induction induction sensors. So they, they get plugged in and they are they are heat cycled. So so we know if they if they measure the same uh, same distance if they are uh, hot or not. We are building the full assembled machines here. So this is the farm. And the print farm at Prusa Research is actually their proving grounds for their own machines. These are all stock Prusa machines. And if they find out that something is fundamentally wrong with the design, they'll fix it and improve it for everyone. Still looking pretty much the same as when you were here last time, right? I think there's a little bit over 300. And we are printing just, just enough for the production. And we don't like to keep much stock of the printed parts because if we change something, we have to throw them away. But yeah, we are, we are going to switch to the Mark III's. We, uh, we never wanted to uh, like, uh, slow down production because all, or you know, take printers which will go to the customers to, to get them here. And by the time you're watching this video, these have all been replaced by Mark III's already. Uh, I, there's over 300. Not all are connected. So this is uh, how we monitor everything. There's a small Ethernet to serial bridge. And we are trying to do some statistics uh, under it. And guys, they, can, they, they just see, ciao. They just see where there are printers still running. So this is the INC, the, the board which is running the printer. Here we are doing some more tests on more machines. And they will go to the developers. Here are some Mark III's prepared for the farm. So we have now seven people in total. Ciao. Seven people working on Slicer. Tady jsou SLAčka. So here you see the... the, the, the the, the SLA, SLA machines, but I kind of ask not to, not to yeah. uh, publish it yet because a, what would happen, the, it would swarm our live chat. Here we have a test room. Well, this is where we test the inconsistent extrusions. So we, we have the gents, which is like the, the indestructible machine. So that's how we found out it's, uh, it's based, the, the problem is from Bontex or the, the drive gears all together. Uh, here we have uh, here we have a machine which is rigged with uh, load cells, so we can measure the the pressure. Uh, we can measure the pressure uh, uh, in the extruder and everything with uh, rotational encoders and stuff like that. Here uh, here is uh, the dev room, and we are doing we are doing more tests. We are working on better cooling and other stuff. Um, yeah, do, do you watch South Park? <laughs> okay, so I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, quality engineers. 
So, so the quality engineers they do like the guides how to check what what is uh, what is okay, what is not. So, ale máš nějaké větší? So, so, so this is. So they are preparing the how, how uh, everything should be checked and what is what is okay, what is not, and they are quite uh, quite strict. Uh, Twenty five percent of our production time is just checking for for quality. Our our office with Grumpy Andre, <laughs> and and here here is our secret office. <laughs> so, so we can work out and and you know, relax if one of us has a uh, relax if one of us has a uh, meeting right over there. So the other can hide here. Right now we are we are about to start working on the terrace here. So we can go here uh, and have some chill. Yeah. Okay, let's go. This is our selfie spot. Yeah, I need to. Do, do, you, do you want a you selfie with, with me? <laughs> yeah, we, we need you there. Okay. Selfie with yourself? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this pretty much covers it all. Uh, I was really surprised seeing a few things. So first off, like the scale they're working at, there are 320 people now. You, you don't realize that. You, you think it's like some small startup. Yeah, that they still are, but it's it's a massive operation. And they've definitely not lost that startup vibe. There's nothing that was like over polished or over presented in there. Um, everything is still a bit rough around the corners, which allows them to, to work just fast and to innovate and to do new stuff. And what I loved seeing is that the people that are working there are actually 3D printing. There are Mark 3s and Mark 2.5s just all throughout the entire building, throughout the offices. And even if it's just human resources or marketing or whoever else, they have the machines that are using them. They know how to use them. It's not like they're completely detached from, from what they're actually making. And that's something that can happen really fast if you're a big company. But here it's like, People there are makers, they are creative, they are actually using the machines they have, which is just so good to see. So yeah, while this wasn't my typical content, I still think it, it's like super interesting to kind of demystify what is going on with these companies. If you liked it, leave that thumbs up. If you want to learn more about the Prusa SL1 or their Prusa Mint, there are links in the video description below as always. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.